The Matrix Reloaded movie review. Taking place six months after the events of the first film, the Oracle is now missing. Meanwhile, Neo is facing difficulties. He doesn't know what he is supposed to be doing. He has accepted his role, but he doesn't know what it entails. He also fears that he is losing Trinity, and he doesn't obviously doesn't want that to happen, but he doesn't know how to stop it. And then people find out that sentinels are on the way. A quarter of a million. I guess the machines didn't know the word overkill. They are on the way directly to Zion and Morpheus and the others who believe. We find out in this movie that not everyone actually believes the prophecy. Morpheus tries to fight it with faith and others seek to fight in more perhaps rational means. This film has a lot of problems, so let's try to take them one by one. The first film did set up this universe. However, it's also very... You know, you don't need to watch more than the first movie. So it didn't leave that many loose ends. In this one, from really early on, you see Zion. And you are introduced to you know, a lot more than you were in the first movie. They try to expand this universe that they set up with the first movie, but they have so much to expand it with. And it's not that some of this could really be cut out. Well, some of it could, obviously, but the problem is there's so much of it that it's just, it's too much for us, and it also just completely changes what it you know, what the whole nature of The Matrix is as a movie and as a universe. Then the, there's the issue of the characters. The first one introduced side characters and made us care about them. This one introduces side characters. We don't really care that much about them. We, we kind of just want to get to the parts with Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus. And the worst case is definitely the kid. He's been dubbed the Jar Jar Binks of this franchise. I disagree. He's not Jamaican. He is every bit as obnoxious and just... Yeah. There's no need for him in these movies, and a quick yeah, and an hint to any movie maker, current or you know, someone who will be in the future. If you introduce a character and make it clear that the other characters hate that character, the audience is probably gonna hate that character as well. Not that it would have helped that much if the other characters hadn't hated him. We'd just be wondering why they didn't hate him. The acting gets really bad. Keanu Reeves is asked for more range in this, and some of it he pulls off, but other times. And then there are the minor characters who are really, really hit and miss as far as acting capabilities go. The dialogue. With the first movie, awful dialogue was the exception to the rule. Here it is the rule, with very very few exceptions. There's almost no good dialogue in this. The delivery can still be really good. I mean, Hugo Weaving and Morpheus still 
fantastic job at the, you know, especially Morpheus' monologues. But when you, you know, actually stop and listen to what they're saying, it's just not that good writing. You know, you could kind of see hints that the Wachowskis could write lines that, you know, clearly they thought were a lot more clever than they actually were. In this, those are all over the place. Really, really forced, you know, supposedly clever dialogue. The philosophy, it's not bad, but it's just so obvious. In the first film, it was very carefully integrated in the rest of the film. It felt natural. It wasn't like some... the characters didn't just stop and suddenly go into a monologue about the meaning of this or that. Here they do. All the time. And the structure is just horrible. We have these large chunks of, you know, basically exposition, philosophy, and then action. The action is still really good, although at times they do... scenes tend to drag on for ever. And basically, with the exception of just a few scattered minutes, the action in this movie is entirely in one block. In basically the middle of the movie. So we have the opening of the movie where people are just sitting waiting for something to happen and all we get is you know new details about this world and some of those are interesting enough but then we get a lot of you know really heady philosophy stuff and just you know we're sitting there you know, tapping our feet going okay when is something gonna happen I, I thought I was watching the matrix they're not even in the matrix for the first half hour or so again with a few exceptions and again, then the action block comes up, and after that ends, there's just not really anything else. There's tension in the rest of the film, at least here and there, but there are also these scenes that just feel like they didn't need to be there. Like the infamous rave scene. About the action. The famous freeway sequence is as awesome as you have all heard. It, yeah. You know, if, if you have to watch some part of this movie, if you know someone's got a gun to your head telling you to watch one portion of this movie, choose that one. You know, just fast forward and just go with it. That, that would be, you know, my suggestion there. But yeah, the martial arts, the shooting, the Careful use of slow-mo, although sometimes in this it does get a little too much. You know, with how long the action scenes go on, the use of slow-mo can get to be a bit much also. But the choreography and the choice of weapons, still very cool. Neo himself can be a little... They've made some changes to him. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who hasn't already seen the first one, but that thing he does at the end of the first one, he does that some more. A lot more. And that segues me, nice, segues me nicely into the effects. They are fantastic, don't get me wrong, but they are also all over the place. There is, you know, in the first one it felt like the effects served a purpose. They told the story, they moved things along. In this one, they could do it, so they did it. With a lot of it. And again, you know, with when you look at older films, their effects tend to reflect the abilities of effects people at the time. That's why you'll see them cutting from effects to reaction shots. And as it turns out, that's actually good filmmaking because it gets us involved. You know, when you see just effects and effects, it 
gets kind of stale. And with this, they don't completely admit when they can't actually do something properly. The faces, the animated faces, never look good. Just, they, they look all wrong. There are times when they just, you can barely believe how off they are, but they never look completely good. You know, it's only when someone's face has been digitally replaced by a face that is actually there, that was actually filmed, that is actually a human face. The pace is really bad. I guess this goes along with the structure, basically. We have these long sections of one particular thing, and it doesn't really go into something else, you know. With both this and Revolutions, you almost feel like they only had one really good movie in them, or at least one really good Matrix movie. I'm not gonna suggest that anyone stay away from Bound, because that's actually also a pretty good movie. Not really Matrixy at all, though. And it just... You know, or that they maybe didn't... They didn't have this one really planned out, it would seem. Or they... You know, they, they focused on making the first one really work as a standalone and really have an impact. And then suddenly they had all this new stuff to introduce. And... Yeah, it just, it gets to be too much, and, you know, we end up missing what we really liked in the first movie. And we tend not to really get it, except for, you know, the fighting and the stylization. The film does look great, you know, the way it's filmed, the way it's edited, it's still fantastic. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.